What's up guys and welcome to Idaho Fly Life. So today we're going to be tying the pig sticker, which is a worm imitation, kind of like a San Juan worm or a squirmy worm, just obviously a little bit different. You can see it here. Um, great fly, gets down really fast. You use a ton of lead free wire on this so it sinks like a rock. So let's get into materials. Uh, first material obviously is going to be the hook and that's a Mustad 37160BN. Uh, it's this hook right here. Got a nice curve to it. That's what you want. It's what makes this look like a worm and not just like a regular nymph. Uh, for thread, which will make up the bulk of the body. Uh, we're going to be using Ultra Thread, and it's 140 denier, so UTC 140 in burnt orange. You can tie it in burnt orange. You can tie it in red. Those are the colors I recommend. But, you know, give purple a try. Give whatever other color you want to try. Uh, that's all up to you. We're going to be using some 0 0.015 lead-free wire. That's our weight, and that's a lot of the fly. And then we're going to be using ultra wire, size small in silver, for our rib. Let's get right into this tie, guys. Get your hook secured in the vise. And, you know, I, I tend to kind of point that eye of the hook just a hair up. Uh, first thing we're going to do is weight this fly. Now, I'm going to take a ton of wire, so we'll see if I can give this to you for perspective. Nope, can't, because we're zoomed in too close. But, uh, let's say a foot of wire, and it's a rough measurement, but about a foot of wire works. We'll start this right here, basically where the barb is, and then we're going to wrap forward. We're going to basically wrap forward all the way to about two eye lengths back from the, head of the, or from the eye of the hook here. And get these to touch as well as you can. When you get to the top here, kind of the best thing to do that I found is to squish it together. There. Continue to wrap forward. And see, this fly has a lot of wire work and a lot of thread work. Now, the wire work I want you to see because I want you to see the start and stop points. And how I organize the wire here. So again, about two eye lengths back, this is good. And again, it weights the heck out of this fly. I mean, it just sinks like a rock. Go ahead and helicopter off both ends of the wire. If you can. There we go. Okay. Now we'll start our thread. And again, the thread makes up the bulk of the body. So I'm going to start the thread here. Basically, that just behind that bottom bend in the hook. And what we're really going to do is make a thread dam behind these wraps. So I'll only go about three-quarter back, and then back forward. I suppose it would be backward since it's toward the lead. Then we're going to go half. And we're going to come back. And then one quarter. And again back. And really, the goal of this... Oh, don't clip your tag end out too. Forgot to mention that. Leave the tag end. It actually makes wrapping the, through this wire a little bit easier. The goal here is to make sure that when you step up on this lead-free wire, that uh, it's smooth, that the transition point is smooth. So now we're going to wrap over. And these really don't have to be touching wraps all the way back. Um, we're trying to get everything set. But keeping that tag end aligned with the side the fly makes this so much easier let me readjust so you guys can see that a little better because that allows it to ride up mostly on the wire you'll still get some some wraps that that wind through but that's okay so when we get to the end here we're going to take one wrap behind the wire let that thread hang and then come and clip out your tag end so what makes this fly pretty seamless is actually where we're going to attach the rib. So this is, instead of tying it in like directly on top of the wire where you're going to get a weird crease line. Oh, and by the way, you're taking about, a you know, 10 inches to a foot of this stuff as well. There will be a little waste in this fly. That's just the nature of the beast when it comes to tying with so much wire. But let's get back to it here. So when you tie this wire in, 
you're basically just going to do your 45 right below those lead-free wire wraps. See there? And you'll pull the wire short. And you'll start wrapping below it. There should be a smooth transition point there, right? The whole thing with worms is worms are usually pretty smooth. So from here, and I already started doing it, but I'm going to build a thread dam right up to the back end of our lead free wire as well. And down to basically almost where my jaws grip that hook in the vise. One more round. Down just a little farther and back up. Again, the name of the game here is going to be smooth. So from here, uh, I'm going to I'm going to do a fast forward here because I don't want you guys to have to see me do thread work for 15 minutes or 7 minutes or whatever it takes. But I'm going to break this fly into thirds. So the first third, I'm going to wrap and I'll show you the first third and then the other two thirds I'm going to fast forward through. The first third from to here, I'll wrap up and back. The second third, I'm going to go up and back and then up and back one more time. I like the middle of this fly to be a little bit thicker. And then the forward third, I'll just go again up and back and then back forward. So let's get to that real quick. And each time you go forward, before you go back, uncord your thread. So spin it counterclockwise to un uncord it. So it's a nice smooth lay, right? Okay, so here's up the first third to right about here. And then I don't need to uncord because I just did it. We'll wrap back. And we're covering up all of that lead-free wire is the goal of this, to make, again, a nice smooth transition here all the way forward. And that means that you're going to have to come back down here onto your tapered wraps. And then we're going to go forward again, smoothing everything out along the way. Now, a little bump like this is not the biggest deal in the world. You don't want to have a lumpy, bumpy body, though. Okay. So that's your first third. You're going to do the same thing again. The second one, we're going to go up, back, up, back, and then back forward, obviously, because you've got to go back forward. You can't just jump your thread. Um, but we're going to, from this point forward, we're going to go ahead and fast forward this. You guys will be able to see it, but uh, that's what we're going to do here. guys enjoy the nice music and the time warp <laughs> all right so we've got a pretty nice smooth body here uh looks good to me um could be a little bit smoother but again it's a worm you're not going to get it absolutely perfect this rib is going to help take care of some of that so we're going to go ahead and wrap the rib like you would normally wrap a rib on any nymph or basically anything else it's kind of like palmering it and at the back of the fly, what I like to do personally is wrap those wraps a little closer. And then as I get to the center of the fly, you're going to be just a little bit farther away. A little bit wider gap in there, like that. Right. Don't get it crazy, but a little bit wider is good. You'll have to excuse my wrapping technique here. The camera between me and the wire makes it a little bit more difficult. That's okay. We work with what we got. All right. Okay. So when we get to the front here, and that's a little too wide. I said I like to get the, th the wire just a little bit closer until we get basically to our thread here. And then we're going to tie that wire off. And when I tie the wire off, I'm going to go one in front to secure it, and two behind. One in front, two behind. You can just grab that wire, 
helicopter it off. Shake your whole table in the process. Helicopter it off. We're gonna go ahead and reorient this so you can see it just a little bit better. My vice jaws are not as tight as I want them to be. And then, here we go. Easy peasy. We're gonna whip finish. Six turns. One, two, three, four, five, see, six. Okay, so lesson, get your vice jaw tension correct. We're gonna redo that. There. All right, six turn whip finish, pull it tight. Then snip out that thread as close as possible. Now, uh, if you want to be done here, you can be. Uh, this, if you don't have the next set of materials, you don't have to do it. But you can add a coating to this. So either Sally Hansen Hard as Nails, or what we're going to use today is going to be this Solar Ez Bone Dry Thin. Uh, what I like to do right over the top is give this a, a generous coating without any sag, right? So give it a nice generous coating all the way to the head. All the way back to the back end here. And then I've got a Renzetti rotary, so this is gonna be a little bit easier for me. If you don't have a rotary vise, um, you're gonna to have to do this, this job here to coat the underside and get it as even as you can. And then far side. And again, you shouldn't have to, to recoat the applicator multiple times, right? Like I, I didn't have to recoat at all. Um, that's, that's kind of what you want, right? So a little bit on the thinner side, that's why we're using that bone dry thin and we'll hit it with the light here. Cure it for just a couple seconds, let it sit. And then a couple more seconds, let it sit. And this is just what I do with the solar as, uh, again, if you have a different technique you like to use to cure this. Feel free to do whatever you want as the tire. I just want to give you the pattern. Do with it what you will. And then I give it 15 to 20 seconds here. And I'm spinning the whole time. Again, you don't have to do that either. If you don't have a rotary vise, this is not going to work this way. So you'll be doing you know, this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Don't shine it right in your eyes. So hold it nice and low, up way high. And we're cured. So... Again, bone dry is nice because it is just what they say. There's no tack to it. it. It gets very dry after the fact. I love that stuff. That's it. That's the pig sticker. Again, use this as a lead fly. Uh, you obviously set it up in a, in a two nymph rig, but you will get some massive fish on this fly. Uh, if there's going to be a big fish and, and you want a fly that's going to produce, I mean, you can go with a big streamer, but if you're nymph fishing, this works very, very well. Uh, that's it, guys. Uh, that's it for the fly. If you like this video, uh, go ahead, feel free to, to hit the like button, subscribe. We love subscribers around here. Um, we do some giveaways and that kind of stuff too. Uh, if you hated it and you think I did this all entirely wrong, leave a comment. I look through all the comments and I basically answer all the comments. But uh, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great day.